I was very young when I realized I had a gift for chemistry. My earliest memories are of quiet afternoons spent in the serenity of my parents' home, gazing at some newfound wonder of scientific discovery. I'm just not having you going down wearing that low-cut dress and all them men looking at you. By the time I was in my teenage years, I was beginning to see life as it really was. A series of illusions that only the scientists can strip away. I wanted to see this hidden world, to lift the veil, I know the secrets of existence in the palm of my hand. And this is a gift from me to you for your experiments. I had little in common with my father, my sister, and my stepmother. And life at home was a stale affair. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please put your hands together for Mr. Dickie Boo? You know it's true. I think I'll make this all a nice cup of tea. But I tried hard to look upon my time there as an opportunity for research. After all, even the most ordinary domestic item has its scientific value. Is he in my bloody room again? He is. I've killed the little swine. Dad! Graham Young, if you've been interfering in my private things again, I'll sleep for you! Wait, get back in here, you! Riley, Fred, what the devil have you put in this tea? It smells all ammonary, Dad. Oof. It smells like brain flute. It smells like cat's piss. Graham! Get your backside in here, now! Yeah? Have you been using your mother's cups and saucers for your bloody experiments? Hey, What have I told you? Taste this. Go on! Taste it! Off me! It's got nothing to do with me! You want to ask her? Ask her what she was mixing up in the kitchen last night. Me? Yes, you. I think you recall mixing a certain something in one of Mama's teacups. Oh, you didn't use the best china, win. She most certainly did. Shut up, you. What was you mixing? What stuff? Yes, what was that stuff? Will you tell him to shut his mouth before I kick him in it? Yeah, shut up, you. Did you or did you not mix up some stuff in one of your mother's best teacups? Yes. No, we're getting somewhere. What was it? <laughs> Doesn't matter what it was. It was private. Private? Women's private. For removing unwanted... <laughs> you know what? No, I don't know what. You're not pregnant, are you? No, I am not. <laughs> Someone get him out of here. What was you mixing? Oh, for God's sake, let it drop. Come on, love. You can tell me I'm your fiancé. I think this might provide some answers. <gasps> you bastard! <laughs> Fred, Fred, love, no! Depilatory cream for use on problem moustaches vanishing minutes. Crikey, love. 
Never told me about this. Watch out, Dennis. I reckon she's turning into a werewolf. I knew there would be some who would want to stand in my way. But I would not be swerved. I was on the verge. The verge of a great discovery. These books have been removed from our shelves because they're considered unsuitable for readers under 18 years of age. A fact of which you should be perfectly cognizant, Mr. Young. Gray's Anatomy, Pathology for the Student Nurse, My Friends on the Slab. They're for my father. He's asked me to do some research for him. He's a GP, you see. No, he isn't. He's a machine setter at Cadogan's. And your mother plays the accordion at the Spotted Dog. And from now on, Mr. Young, you will restrict your reading matter to the appropriate section. I'll have you know I'm presently involved in a series of highly important scientific experiments. Children's Library through the swing doors on your way out. what you wanted. Thank you, Miss Butler. You're very kind. Do you fancy a date, Graham? Don't be shy. <laughs> Every king needs a queen, and I had found mine. I decided to pursue my work with renewed vigor. While others followed the common course, my every waking hour was consumed with study. got today? Advanced pathology and the sacking up killers. No, sandwiches. Oh, egg and cress. Watch. And then, one day, I found it. An experiment which captured my imagination like nothing before. Antimony sulfide, one of nature's most volatile substances. If treated incorrectly, it leaves the residue of a lethal poison. But Newton discovered that it could also be transformed in the flask into a diamond of breathtaking beauty. Then and there, I vowed that this diamond would be mine.
The effects of antimony poisoning, i.e. vomiting and severe abdominal pain, are easily confused with a whole host of intestinal disorders. Swaps. As recently as 1942, Ronald O'Keefe, a young New York accountant, succeeded in poisoning his secretary's lunchtime ham sandwiches with antimony, cleverly disguising the poison's sharp, tartaric taste with a liberal sprinkling of mustard powder. Mustard powder? Yeah, there's a picture of her stomach here. Oh, God, that's disgusting. I thought Dex would banish you to the junior shelves. I have a contact. She can get me anything I want, any time I want. Sue Butler. Yeah, well, you can lay off there if you don't mind. I've been softening her up for weeks. Do you know her? Know her? Sue and me? Or is it me and Sue? Have a date this Friday night. Front circle, Golders Green Hippodrome. Admit to only. It's just that we made a date two weeks ago, as a matter of fact. You? When did she give you that? Your mum's out of date, pal. Look, it's almost completely faded. Oh, you don't believe me, Graham. Go on. Take a look. Nothing wrong with the print quality on that. Sauce. Terrible predilection I have for ketchup. When I was a boy, I drank a whole bottle on my way home from a fish and chip shop. It looks like a road accident, doesn't it, Sue? We had a terrible one last summer. Our house is very close to one of the North Circular's black spots. An awful thing. Was anybody hurt? Yes. A young woman. Mercifully, she was killed outright. Thrown 50 yards through the windscreen, decapitated. Yes. The farmhand searched up and down the road for hours, couldn't find it. Eventually, it turned up in Hatfield. It seems its trajectory had sent it across the central reservation and into the oncoming traffic. It landed in this chap's camping trailer. When he arrived at his destination, he looked in the back and found an extra item, as it were, that was not on the packing list.
Sometimes the speed of impact can force the head so that it disappears completely, right inside the ribcage. What do you think about this? I'm going to miss my bus. Here's some money for the tea. You left your chocolates. You, they're not mine. You wouldn't do this in a million years if you had any respect for your body, would you? No, Mum. I'd rather someone took me out and shot me. Now, there's an idea. Look, I told you, I've never set eyes on them before. Then what were they doing behind the emotion tank in my bedroom? You're not suggesting they're your sisters. I don't know whose they are. Maybe they're her boyfriends. Dennis! Dennis is a supervisory weights and measures officer for the Board of Trade, thank you very much. You're sick. Do you know that? They're not mine. Whose are they, then, if they're not yours? I fell asleep in my loved one's arms, and that night I dreamt of my diamond. I was happy in my sleep because the diamond was mine, but when I woke up, it was gone. Already. Just one item today, Mr. Goetz. I could see now that everything had been leading to this moment. I had decided on the direction my scientific career was to take. And there could be no turning back. Mum's inside with Dr. Scott. Does he know what's wrong with her? How the hell should I know? I told you, he's in there now. She'll be all right now. I've given her some muscle relaxant and a rectal lavage. Lavage? An enema, Father. An enema? What on earth does she need that for? Have you any idea what brought it on? Rich food, I imagine. Rich food in this house? Forgive me, Mr. Young, but as I understand it, your wife's discomfort was uh, preceded by the ingestion of half a box of velvet victories. I've given her some soothing medicine for her tummy, 
Otherwise, it'll be the usual drill, plenty of fluid, and no staring into the fire. I'll leave it to our young medical expert here to make sure she does what she's told. Two spoonfuls daily, after meals. The first stage of the experiment had gone to plan. Now there was only one obstacle on my path. Graham, where's that medicine? Mum's waiting. Coming. The prying eyes of my dear sister, Winnie. She's supposed to get two of those. I know, thank you. Nothing. I just think we should all stick together now that Mum's ill. Oh, for God's sake, Graham, you're acting as if she's on death's door. She's only got to touch the tummy wobbles. I'm not so sure. What are you getting at? Nothing, really. Just a thought. Drink a tea before it gets cold. I was free to conduct my experiment without interruption. Oh, dear. Oh, dog breath. Uh, <clears throat> smells like... Like what? Like death. It all cut out. Oh, shut up. Well, she did. All oh, right, we've heard it all before. She had one of them bags, do she? All right, give over. Well, I never. <laughs> Look at this, Uncle Jack. Quite the young tough these days, aren't we? Looks like a bloody funeral, Director. Been out courting, have you? Oh, I'm afraid I don't have time for anything but my work these days, Auntie. Still finding the cure for cancer, are you? So, what's your diagnosis on all this then, Graham? Well, Dr. Scott seems to think it's some kind of nervous stomach disorder, but uh, 
I'm exploring other avenues. I'm just off to Dennis's. See you later. Oh, poor girl. And you say she bought it from Boots? Oh, you've no idea how many lethal products are sold over the counter these days, Auntie. Well, they're normally very good, aren't they? They do these wine-making kits now. These people will put anything in their products as long as they sell. They're completely unscrupulous. I wouldn't be surprised if this is exactly the kind of thing behind my poor mother's illness. Well, I must say you seem to know an awful lot about this sort of thing. He's my little Louis Pasteur, aren't you, Graham? Suspicion had been voiced. It was necessary to deliver the fatal blow. And then one day, the solution presented itself. It was a true story that I was reading. A unit of Dutch resistance fighters had poisoned the Nazis' water supply with a substance called thallium. Over the next few days, the Nazis dropped dead one by one, each of them apparently from a different cause. They all had only one symptom in common. All their hair had fallen out. I decided to research the substance more thoroughly. I've got something to give you. Diamond ring. It was your mother's. Fred gave it me when we married, but I've never been able to wear it. I want you to have it for always. Sure's my right. Oh, Graham. How funny. Taking all this to bring us together. Graham? Graham? Can't go off. Put yourself together, will you? I'm gonna find out what's behind this if I have to tear that house apart. Hope you're not gonna have another nervous breakdown like you did when our first mother died. What did you say? You did, didn't you? I don't think I'll be here to look after you or our grave for that matter, because I shan't. God, it's no wonder he turned out so sodding weird. Nice, just look at her, will you? I don't reckon she even knows who we are anymore. 
She's not been near that toilet for days. She has. Thank you, Mum. She hasn't, you know. We'd have heard her if she had. Have you been to the toilet for solids in the past 24 hours, Mother? For solids, not just pee-pee. I don't believe this is happening to me. Never a day's illness in her life. Strong as a card horse, and now look at her. She's like a broken stick. She can hear you. Help me get her head back. For God's sake, can't you see? She don't want it. Bloody buffoon. Of a mind, it's this that's making her worse. trying to say is she wants us to give it to her it, it's just too painful for her to swallow what the hell are we supposed to do look i think you should both go off to work you're just getting yourselves in a state i'll take the day off school read to her maybe she'll take some later on when she's feeling more relaxed come on come on with me to the bus The thallium had been a greater success than I could possibly have hoped. After she was gone, we couldn't decide whether to buy her a walnut coffin or an aphimosia teak. Finally, we settled on walnut. She'd always liked walnuts. And alongside the inevitable sadness, I found myself pondering an interesting question. Namely, that while being a good poisoner involves remaining undetected, becoming a famous one would seem to demand getting caught. Such were my thoughts as I watched my stepmother go up and smoke that day. May I help you to some pickle, Uncle Jack? Yeah, go on, go on, yeah. Just a jot. Help things down. Look, I don't want to worry you. And not a word of this to win. But... Well, I've been feeling a bit queer myself these past few days. You know, same symptoms as your mum. No, you're imagining it, Dad. You feel guilty about her suffering and you won't let her go without suffering yourself. Anyway, if you're worried, we could always call Dr. Scott. No fear. I'm not having that clown shoving things up my anus. Mind me, pint. I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I had discovered my metier. Thallium was to be my life's work. Tasteless, colorless, odorless, untraceable. I would be the greatest poisoner the world had ever seen. Hello, Graham. Hello, Mick. Hello, Sue. We heard about your mum. Your dad's on his last legs and all are here. Yes. Same hospital, same symptoms. Two weeks later, stroke of bad luck, that, isn't it? Then again, I heard everyone in your streets come down with some bug or other. Right, you're going, you'll be the only bastard left in Neasden. My mother died of a prolapsed bone at the top of her spinal column, Michael. She slipped whilst walking in the garden and it snapped, just like that. No bugs, Michael. No bugs mentioned here. And if I were you, I'd watch how you speak to me in future, both of you. Have you any idea where he is? He's 
not here at the moment. What's new to call? I'm his auntie. a dose, you fucking idiot! You've gone to ruin everything. Everything! I was convicted of murder and attempted murder. And after my trial, which was a swift affair, the judge sent me for medical tests. The evidence was conclusive. I was an incurable psychopath and was to be locked away for life. Prisoner 2338175, Graham Frederick Young, Home Secretary's Warrant for Detention and the Prison's Medical Dossier, sir! Pink card, Mr. Hopwood. Pink card, Mr. Trent. Carry this at all times. Fourteen years old, eh? Welcome to Harshurst, son. We hope you enjoy your stay. My bunkmate Berridge was a young soldier from Lewisham who'd come home on leave one day and shot both his parents in the head. Mommy, mommy. He was about to relive this episode for the second time that night. Uh, Berridge. Berridge. Uh, Berridge, wake up. You're dreaming again. Uh, Let's go back to sleep. Did you never have this? Your mum visions on that. No! You're lucky. Perhaps this new bloke might be able to do something for me. What new bloke? I heard in the office we're getting a new senior psychologist, psychiatrist. It's Dr. Zeigler. I reckon he's one of the best. <coughs> you work with him then if he. He reckons you're cured. He recommends you to the Home Office. My career as a poisoner may have been temporarily interrupted, but I had not entirely wasted the last two years. Having worked my way up from the tailor shop to the carpentry class, I found my way into Block 2, which houses Harshurst's considerable library. Within days of my arrival, I had the run of the shelves. The Danish doctors have applied a treatment of castration to the criminal psychopaths. Which they say promises well. Draw this from a medical and legal standpoint, they're nothing but a bloody nuisance. The lawyers don't know how to convict them, and we don't know how to cure them. Uh, have any of them had any kind of uh, individual treatment since they arrived? Dr. Zeigler, these patients are not labelled chronic simply for our convenience. Here at Harshurst, we forego the luxuries of rehabilitation and humbly limit ourselves to the more mundane tasks of control and protection. See. So all of these men are classified as psychopaths? Moral imbeciles to a man. Allow me to demonstrate. What's your name, boy? Berridge, sir. And why are you here, Berridge? I killed my parents, sir. And if you had your time over, would you do it again? No, sir. No, sir. Why no, sir? Why do you think you would not do it again? Because they'd send me back to this place, sir. Because they would send me back to this place, sir. A conditioned response indicating fear of reprisal. There's no moral sense at work here at all. 
In my experience, psychopaths really show the least sign of any inner change or development. Vulpes pilum mutet non mores, as they say. The leopard never changes his spots. Wolf, sir. Could you speak, boy? Sorry, sir, but vulpes means wolf, sir. Vulpes pilum mutat non mores means, literally, the wolf changes its fur but not its nature, sir. Not that it, it changes the central point of your argument. I, I'm sure you're absolutely right. And so it was that the very next day I was selected for treatment by the famous Dr. Zeitler. Are you going to cure me, sir? Uh, sit down, please. Well, um, that's what we're here to find out. Do you think I'll ever get out? I don't think that we should uh, speculate on these things just at the moment. I think that we should um, apply ourselves to the work that's ahead of us. Do you think that you're up to it? I want to live rightly and lovingly, sir. And what do you think has prevented you from doing so up until now? I don't know, sir. Dr. Trefer says something inside me has died. He, he says I'll never be able to feel anything for anybody. And do you always believe what uh, Dr. Trefer says to you? Maybe you'll, you'll allow me to be the judge of that from now on. All right, this thing that uh, Dr. Trefer says has uh, died inside you, let's say, just for the moment, let's say that it hasn't died. Let's say that it isn't functioning properly. How so, sir? Well, I like to think that our um, emotional functions are not unlike our limbs, our organs. They can be broken, damaged. And I like to think that anything that's broken and damaged can also be uh, fixed. You're going to fix me, sir? Well, it's not just going to be up to me. You're going to be doing most of the work. How will you know I'm not faking it? Because the work that we're going to be doing here in this room, we're going to be doing together. Do you see? I'm, I'm going to be with you on this journey. And when we find what we're looking for, we will know. I want you to um, tell me your dreams. You'd like me to tell you my dreams, sir? Yes, I want you to write them down. Somebody once said that um, until something is written down, it doesn't really exist. And the same with our dreams. And once you put your dreams on paper, then we'll be able to examine them and um, see what they have to show us. Will you do that for me? I think it's a wonderful idea, sir. And I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. Up to that point, I had been doing brilliantly with Dr. Zeidler. Or so I thought. But he had asked me to give him the one thing which I couldn't provide. In all my time in Harshurst, I had not been able to remember a single solitary dream. I'm standing in a room, and there are these two exits. And one leads down the stairs into, into darkness. And at first I think I, I really want to go down there and see what's going on. The other leads out into, into fields of quiet sunshine. And suddenly I'm, I'm at the side of a lake. And I have my chemicals with me, bottles and, and bottles of poisons. One by one I tip them into the lake. When I'm finished, I, I feel cleansed. And then I wake up. What do you think this is trying to tell us? I think it's trying to tell us that we're wasting our time. You've made this up, yes? Do you have any idea how much trouble I've gone to on your behalf? Hmm? There's 700 men in this institution. I've got the impossible task of selecting a handful with whom I can find the time to work. Now, if you're not prepared to give of yourself honestly, I promise you that I will find a replacement who will. So I had one more chance. Dr. Zeigler was obviously a man who required the real thing. But where was I to find it? You are. I think we need to extract them, as if they were a poison. I think we need to write them down. Somebody once said that until something's been written down, doesn't really exist. I can't write. It doesn't matter. You can tell them to me and I'll write them down. 
And then, once they're on paper, we have them, you see? They're ours. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Well, it starts like this, so I walk in the house and the old place smells of fat. Big fat, like, you know, really sweet. And I uh, wouldn't have seen me mum and dad, their limbs are all hanging off. Uh, and they're all green and rotten inside. But the worst bit is when I go into the toilet. I go into the toilet because I'm, I'm going to be sick with the smell. And I look into the bowl and I can see my mum's head. My mum's head staring back at me from the bowl. Then her face comes up out of the toilet bowl, lips quivering with rage, gums bared and bleeding. She wants to devour me. She grabs me by the throat, begins to drag me down into the bowl. Yep, and that's where he wakes up. What exactly would you like us to conclude from all this? Well, yes, all right. I know that you're skeptical, Doctor, but if we can't help this boy, who is so intelligent and in such pain, who can we help? I mean, what is the purpose of our work here? And so, thanks to the zeal of Dr. Zeidler, I was plucked from the ranks and planted firmly on the road to recovery. <clears throat> I woke up at home. I was in my own bed. There was a thunderstorm. My mum used to let me sleep. Every night, Berridge would offer up the fruits of his ravaged psyche. And every morning, I would offer them up as if they were my very own. Sit down the chair. I was happy. Dr. Zeidler was happy. Even Dr. Trefus was happy. There was only one person who was not. Barrett. Barrett. It's all right. It's all right. I'm here. Now tell me what's happening. Tell me everything you see. I can't. It won't come. It will come. It wants to come. No. We've got to get this stuff out, Berridge. We mustn't let it fester, must we? Not like your parents. On the bedroom carpet. No, no, I can't. You can, Berridge, and you must now. Come on, think, Daniel. It's not working. Just leave me alone. Poor Berridge. I'd been waking him on the hour, every hour, for the past three months. It seemed he'd finally reached the end of his tether. There's nothing that you could have done. The important thing is that you stuck by him. You were his friend. I don't know. I could have spent more time with him. Listen to his cries for help. Sometimes it isn't our place to help, you know? I mean, that's a lesson I've had to learn many times in, in my work. Look, you made a friend. You're grieving because he's left. And that's good. It's a common unhappiness. It's the price we pay for getting close. So that's what it was. It seems I really did miss him. But it was a double blow. My future freedom depended on Berridge's endless flow of dreams, and his death had cut off my supply. We waited, and we waited, and we waited. Maybe it's the loss, sir. Maybe I haven't recovered from the trauma of his death. Perhaps that's why the dreams yes, won't come. Yes, well, perhaps it's I and not your dreams that's failed you. Sometimes when we push too hard, nature doesn't like it. I'm sure if we just waited no, a little... No, I'm sorry, while... Graham. I'm afraid it's all rather out of my hands now. There are others coming up for parole who need my help. And if I'm to continue my work here, I have to show results. So, we'll keep in touch, of course. And there'll be an ongoing program of therapy with other doctors. You'll be in very good hands. What? Like Berridge was. Goodbye, Dr. Seidler. Please accept my apologies for wasting your valuable time. Can 
And then, just as I had abandoned all hope, the strangest thing occurred. It was my diamond, and that night it came back to me more brilliantly than ever. I wrote it all down for him. I had a dream, a real one. I've written it down to you. It's all right, let him go. Let him go. Thank you, Graham. I look forward to reading this, but now I think you must go back into the line. Yes? And you leave this with me over the weekend. Graham, go back into the line. Why haven't you told me about this before? Graham. It's a secret. Well, I want to know about this experiment with the diamond. All right, I'll tell you. You were using a substance called antimony, deadly poison, but actually that's not what interested you. You wanted to use it to make something beautiful, to make this diamond of Newton's. But something went wrong, it blew up in your face. Yes? And then later you used the same substance to poison your stepmother. Am I right? I'm not that simple. I switched poisons to fool them. I used a substance called thallium. That's what killed them. Thallium? It's a heavy metal, probably the most toxic substance known to man. Before I was caught, I was working on a compound that would have made it completely untraceable, a doomsday weapon. I would have used it too. But something went wrong. No. Yes. Otherwise, you'd be out there now ruling the world, but you ended up in here. Now, I think that this dream is pointing us to a moment, or the moment, 
when things started to go very wrong for you. You see, you wanted to make something beautiful in that flask that day. And something turned it into a poison. Now, I think that we ought to go back and do that experiment again. And maybe this time we can make things go in a different way. Why should I share my knowledge with you? You've told me what I am. Nobody cares about me. I, I've got nothing. I can't feel anything. Fine. But I have my secrets. Why should I show them to you or anybody else? They're mine. Maybe this will make you change your mind. Would you believe I cried real tears? Torrents and torrents of them. Tears at the death of my mother, tears at the death of my friend, and tears at the rotten world that had made me this way. They cleansed me, and my redemption was sure to follow. It is precisely by allowing Graham to continue his scientific studies in here, that I've been able to wean him from morbid science towards a more responsible and humane application of his interests. What was bad in the flask has been made good in the flask. I don't claim to have achieved miracles. <laughs> One can achieve nothing unless the raw material is already in place. Well, thank you for your introduction, Doctor. Uh, perhaps we should see the patient for ourselves. Please be seated, Graham. Uh, try not to be nervous, OK? So, who'd like to kick off? Graham, we were all impressed by your academic achievements here at Harshurst. I wonder, would you like to tell us a little about the work you're doing at the moment? Well, we've been looking at... Sorry, that, that's myself and Dr. Zeigler. I've been looking at the work of chemists in the 16th and 17th centuries who were investigating the medicinal possibilities of various curative herbs. Thanks to the help of Dr. Zeigler, I've managed to commandeer a small section of the grounds and uh, create a, a physic garden, much as it would have been laid out at the time. Sounds fascinating. Have you found any that work? Well, we still haven't found a cure for the common cold, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you, Graham. Anyone else? Yes. I should like to ask Graham a question. What, in your opinion, were the uh, influences that brought about your mental disorder? And how can you be sure that they will not present themselves again? Well, sir, I, I think if there's one thing I've learned above all else, it, it's that I can never be sure about anything ever again. I looked for certainties in my youth. I think they were all I could understand. And they comforted me, I suppose. But they also led me here. I don't expect to be forgiven for what I've done. I've taken life, I know. Nothing can ever change that. I I'll always have to live with it. But, but maybe if you see fit, I could, I could spend my life making up for it in some way. And with the greatest respect, the best place to do that is probably not in here. The 
board has made that decision. You're a free man. Aren't you glad? This is everything that we've worked for. Who'll look after all this after I'm, I'm gone? It, it, it'll all go to waste. You've got more important things to do out there. You have to learn how to live. I'm afraid. It's a symptom of your recovery. From now on, your life will be a series of small triumphs, small failures. Just like for all of us. Where will I go? God willing, you'll strike out on your own. Maybe go to university, as we discussed. Graham. Look how far you've come. Wait till you get inside. It's amazing. I don't know what size. It's been so long. It's perfect, Winnie. Just what I wanted. I'm sorry, it's all I had time to get. I don't even know what your interests were anymore, you know. Now that you stopped poisoning people. We're going to get to know each other all over again. New start. <laughs> New family. Mm, this will come in handy. Mm. And Siggy's lovely. And smellies. Oh, and a lighter. Real onyx Graham, you shouldn't have. This really is an embarrassment to rich S, isn't it, Dennis? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks very much, Gray. Yeah, it's very interesting, too. So. Yeah, I shall read that. Oh, and the P.S. Tiller Resistance for Rupert the Beagle. What on earth is it? It's an ID tag. Unscrew the top. I had it printed specially. Ah. To whom it may concern, this is to certify that Rupert the Beagle has undergone psychoanalysis and, contrary to appearances, is not suffering from hydrophobia or any other canine psychosis, signed Sigmund Freud. <laughs> Are we having any tea? I don't think you're jokey enough. Do you want them chocolates? I must say, I'm feeling a little peckish, too. Oh, God, you two, honestly. No, no, my turn. I'll make some sandwiches, shall I? Cold turkey? No, it's all right, mate. Oh. Yeah, cold turkey sandwich be nice. App. App. You want this? Apple sauce. You don't want apple sauce to rot your teeth. All right, just a taste. Best if I run you back now, yeah? 
Yes, yes, I'm so sorry. You're here for the storekeeper's job? Yes. Bloke just gone in, he's got three O levels. Really? Fucking waste of time coming. They'll be wanting nuclear scientists next. Yes. Yes, indeed. Next, please. Dear Dr. Zeigler. You will be happy to know that the placement officer at the Home Office has finally found me a job. It's at a factory called Dudley and Hunters, where they manufacture high-speed cameras and camera lenses. I'm the new trainee store manager. I suppose it's not quite the career I had in mind, but it will at least give me a chance to find my feet. Here, let me give you a hand with these, Edna. You are a love. Do me out of a job next. My duties include general storekeeping, taking inventory and so on, but I'm hoping that in time my true talents may be put to better use. In the meantime, I try to make myself as useful as I can. Queen Mum for you, Ray. And Doug's the dog for you, right, Nathan? So who brought those two out here? Three. There's another two. Stop telling me, stop telling me. Come up now, all did not go quite as I'd hoped with my family, and I've had to find my own accommodation. But life at work is a new and refreshing experience for me. It's a very pleasant crowd of people here. And most importantly, thanks to home office policy, none of them have any knowledge of my former troubles. Yours is the antique car, right, John? Yeah, it is, Tom. And the lovely lady for Deborah. You just look at those hands. Aren't they beautiful? <coughs> don't know where they be. Oh. <laughs> oh, just look at them. Smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I find that I'm accepted as part of the team. With a clean slate, as it were. I feel I really have a chance now to make life go my way. And I know, of course, that it's you I have to thank for this opportunity. I remain your loyal friend, Graham Young. Come on, Come on, mate. Hold on. Coming for a bit, V. I'm afraid of a bit of work to catch up on. Come on, Graham. Simon's driving, ain't you, Simon? Well, that's a no. Aww. Matter, son, you're a bit boracic. <laughs> there you are. Go out and enjoy yourself. Go on. Give it to me back on payday. Well, go on, you're Mr. Bo. I'm £2.15 this round's just cost me. It's not fair, this round system, you know, the women on Bacardis. Still, shan't be here much longer. Where are you going? Back to East Anglia. I'm doing a PhD, Structural Inorganic Chemistry. I'm just doing some lab work to pay off my overdraft. It's quite interesting, I suppose. They're working on a camera that can take 6,000 pictures a second. Is that the Maximize? Hey, how'd you know that? It's meant to be top secret. Oh, work in stores. Things come in and out. Just put two and two together. Why don't you pop round the lab tomorrow? You can have a look at the, uh, you know what. I'd like that very much. Thank you. Listen, Graham, don't tell the others, but I'm slipping out the back. I don't mind you, but I'm not giving this lot a bit of They never give you any petrol money.
What do you think of a wet Tuesday night in Berkshire? Not so bad, is it? Well, it's opened up a whole new vista. Vista? See, what did I tell you, John? I told you he was an artist. Oi, where's that Simon sculpt off to you, Betty? Um, I think he's just gone to the toilet. Yeah, I'm trying to slip out the back more than I. Yeah, well, you needn't bother. I just took the rotor off his distributor. <laughs> Hey, you looking? Here you've got the mechanical elements. You've got an incredibly powerful motorized takeover that pulls the film through. Now, there's no gate. You couldn't find a shutter that works fast enough, obviously. So the film travels loose over this prism. It's a beautiful system. Now, here you've got a little problem. Because the film plane is so far from the lens, you've got to bend the light an incredible amount. Here's what we use to do it. An extraordinary little substance, really. Here, are you concentrating? You look like you've seen a ghost. And indeed I had. For there in front of me sat row upon row of an old friend I hadn't seen for many years. Thallium. Was this some kind of trick by the Home Office? To see if I would fall back into my old ways? Or had it been an illusion? Was I losing my mind? I had to find out. Those bayonet mounts I asked you to get half an hour ago. Oh, yes, bayonets. Yes, bayonets. You deaf as well as daft. Sorry, Ray, I left them in the metal workshop. Oh, sorry, Ray, I left them in the metal workshop. Dear, oh dear. It's a good job your balls are in a bag. Ray? Ray? Ray, what's the matter? I can't feel my fingers. Hold on to him. Fancy having lunch. There's this research fellowship. I'm a little busy. Tell me, feeling any better, Ray? Is it just feeling sore, or is it more a stitch sort of thing? Flaming Nora, I've told you a thousand times, just leave us alone, will you? I'll be fine. news about Billy, isn't it, Deborah? Oh, yes, yes. I was wondering if you'd care to sign this get well card. Do they know what's wrong with him? Some kind of stomach thing, I think. Yes, but do they know what caused it? Now, all I know is that he's in hospital. I wonder if it's the same thing that Ray came down with. Do you think there's a virus going around? Look, I've got 
want to get on, Graham. Haven't you got any work to do? Good God, Graham, are you all right? I, I was going to ask you to sign this Get Well card. I don't suppose I'm such a good... Terrible news about Billy, isn't it? Why are you always snooping round here, Graham? You don't work in here, you work in the storeroom. I was just getting Deborah to sign this Get Well card. Yeah, well. Just keep your fairy fingers to yourself. I beg your pardon, John. There's something about you, Graham, I just don't like. What are you saying, John? I'm not saying anything. Just get back down there with the wooden tops where you belong. This time there would be no error. Tasteless, colorless, odorless, untraceable. The ultimate elixir. One drop, and I would destroy the world. As most of you will know, Billy and Ray have both been admitted to hospital. Now, there seems to be a rumour that their illnesses are related to some kind of bug and may therefore be contagious. I don't know who started this, but it simply isn't true. I don't need to remind you that this company has a highly lucrative order due in Australia at the end of the month. So I'm sure I can rely on you to put your hands to the pump, your shoulders to the wheel and uh, so on. Thank you. Somebody said I was needed in stores. Somebody want my body or something? <laughs> I just wanted to say I'm sorry about the other day. I, I was just trying to be friendly. I, I would hate you to think that my intentions towards Deborah were anything but entirely honorable. Spaghetti, son. Thanks for the cake. If 
if I could have your attention, please. Please. Hmm? I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I've just received some devastating news. Uh -huh. Ray Braithwaite is dead. Uh -huh. mm. John, control uh -huh. yourself. He passed uh -huh. away at half past six this evening. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. This is Graham. I'm Graham Young. I'm a friend of John's from work. I just wanted to inquire about his health. No oh. Oh, dear. Is he in much pain? Oh, we had the doctor in a little while ago. He says he has no improvement. He's going to have to have him admitted. Has there been much vomit and so forth? Yes, I see. Well, I wish you strength. Goodbye. We've just heard about Billy. He's gone. Went in the middle of the night. They say he was begging for a gun to shoot himself in the end. John's in intensive care, and Pete's wife phoned up to say he'd lost all his hair. Looks like a three-quarters black chicken, she says. I don't want to lose my hair. She's been ill, too, over the weekend. There's talk now we may have some new kind of bubonic plague on our hands. Well, I'm going to scare out every corner of that kitchen for starters. No one's going to say Edna hadn't done her bit. my hunch that there's some kind of dreadful mismanagement going on here. It's the chemicals used to produce the lenses. They can't afford to lose the Australian order, and they will sacrifice as many workers as it takes to get it in on time. You mark my words, this health inspection is going to be a whitewash. But if you believe this to be true, Graham, why haven't you told the authorities that you should go to the police? When I was a child, I... I had a sort of breakdown. My mother was killed in a terrible road accident. They sent me to a home for treatment. I made a complete recovery, of course, but no one here knows my medical history. Once they know I was there, they could use me as their scapegoat. Blame me in some way. It's a terrible place, Deborah. I don't think I could live another day if I thought that they were going to send me back there. Don't you worry, Grim. Nobody's going to put you back in that home. Your secret's safe with me. Well, we have some good news and some bad news. After extensive investigations, I can happily say that everything here appears to be fine. That's the good news. The bad news is that it doesn't bring us any closer to understanding what this thing is. It could be uh, an as yet unexplained strain of influenza. Could be a mini plague carried by fleas. <laughs> could even be radioactivity from your nearby government airfield. Uh, I'm just suggesting possibilities. In the meantime, I have no reason to keep you from your work. Have you considered heavy metal poisoning? What makes you ask that? Well, from what I've read in the Barchington Tribune, Ray's symptoms and those of the other victims are constant with some form of metallic toxicity. The convulsions, tachycardia, rapid onset of alopecia, blackening of the fingernails, discoloration of the skin around the nose and scrotum. I'm anxious not to open this discussion up to idle speculation. We'll look into it. Meanwhile, back to work. Thank you. Thank you. 
As the days went by, it became clearer and clearer that my life's work was nearing completion. Soon I would be able to bring the fruits of my labor to the world at large. That Saturday morning, all hands were on deck for the Australian order, seriously jeopardized by the spate of ill health. Here I would put my final compound to the test. Soon the ultimate weapon will be mine. The final solution. After sugar for Tom and Ron. Okay. These are posh. What's happened to all our old mugs? They had me chuck them all out because of the disease. No, not those that for Tom and Mark. I mean Tom and Ron. I don't take sugar. Don't have one then. No, not that. That's for Simon and Ron. I don't want to have one without sugar. Oh. It has got sugar. It's all right. No, it hasn't. Put it back. Come on, any one of these will do. Hold on. Hold on. I'll sort this out. That's fine. No sugar. You have this and I'll take that. Okay. Stop! What's the matter, Graham? It's him. He's the disease. It's been him all along. He's been poisoning our mugs. Give me one.
Now my story is nearly at an end, and I wonder why it all went so horribly wrong for me. Perhaps my stepmother was right. Maybe I really did contaminate everything I touched. I wonder if it could ever have been any different. Are we destined to live the lives we do? Or does the power of change lie within our grasp? I don't suppose we'll ever know. In the meantime, I leave this handbook to those of you who are thinking of traveling in my path. And if you find yourself falling under the spell of poisons and their influence, may it be of some use to you on that strange and fascinating journey. Your humble servant, Graham Young. Be 
feeling of love. 